Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. This is actually a timeless collective reading for the sign of Capricorn. Please know that right now, a lot of you, especially who are empaths, you're highly sensitive like myself, you will start to feel a lot of energies around you. Like I said, the veil is very thin. At this point, it's almost non-existent. Therefore, um, I want you to stay very grounded because you will at times feel as though you are sinking, like you are <laughs> just drowning, nothing is going right, or there's a lot of um, just issues, challenges, and obstacles that are around you. And it may not actually be there it may not be your problem that you're sensing so just be mindful of that but let's just get into it you guys i'm a little nervous i always tell you guys that i'm nervous <laughs> so the first card out is the knight of wands okay i feel like some of you right now are um especially in this season of death you know endings new beginnings rebirth transformation it's extremely important that you have this Knight of Wands energy where you're quick on your feet, where you um, are very optimistic and passionate about a brand new beginning. The hangman is here. So there has been a lot of delays here and perhaps you are receiving some type of um, overall enlightenment or you're going through an awakening or your per your perception or perspective about different things in your life is shifting and changing, especially when it comes to what does it mean to be successful? What does power mean to you? Because the emperor is here. This may be a time where, you know, you are needing to assess and evaluate how you structure your life, how you um, show up and do things in different relationships in your business in your household in your family all of those things are really important but this is not a time for you to stand still the hierophant is here but in this particular deck this is a hierophant who is there and there's no one listening to this person so some of you might right now you may um you may have recently done this or you've been doing this or it's time for you to sort of leave the teachings um the programming of something in your life that has had a major influence. Now, with the emperor being here, the hierophant and the hangman, some of you, this has a lot to do with a masculine energy that has taught you something. Sometimes even um, if there is a masculine, let, let's say um, a masculine in your life, perhaps like a parent, even if they've been absent, still that absence and the perception that you have um, formulated in your mind about masculinity, about um men women masculinity like i said power um success and other things it will be shifted and perhaps some of you you may be recognizing where you're going out in the world or you are dealing with people who are in the world who are around you that have some type of toxic or distorted like masculinity uh, if i'm not mistaken the last full moon was in aries so you guys could have experienced a lot where people were just being very erratic you know somewhat mean forceful harsh abrasive things like that and this may be having you up uh, you know also with the knight of wands being here and the emperor this is the type of person who at times they have a lot of power however they don't understand structure they, they're not disciplined or they are too quick to act they don't understand that there's a lot that can be lost here i do feel like there are people around you hopefully it's not you that could be experiencing a fall from grace um or you may be recognizing that there's someone that perhaps you really had a lot of respect for that no one is really listening to this person or paying attention to this person or you're turning away from this type of energy just because someone's um, how they see or view life. It's just not aligned with you. Someone here has definitely taken some type of risk, though, with the fool card being here. This person has already jumped off of the cliff and looks like they really need help. It's like. Yeah, I, I, do, I definitely feel like there's a very power hungry masculine here. For some of you, um, you know, if you are consider yourself to be a divine feminine here, yeah, with the Queen of Cups being here and this tower here. But if you notice, this is a tower where someone is trying to repair something. Someone is trying to, I feel, um, delay like the inevitable. Okay, the Queen of Cups in this particular deck, this is a Queen of Cups who is fully in their power, feeling very liberated. This is not someone who is naive, gullible, um, a drama queen or king. This is someone here who is dancing like no one is watching. This is someone who is emotionally balanced. And it looks like here for some, we can see this in many different ways. You could have had a very, um, I'm hearing obsessed and possessive like masculine energy here who has tried to do everything honestly to stop you from having a breakthrough now obviously in this card it looks like you know this is more intuitive we, we see the images but 
I feel like this breakthrough here was the breakthrough that this Queen of Cups needed to have in order to be more optimistic and passionate about life, to actually be in this Knight of Wands type of energy. I feel like someone has wanted you to hold on to some type of guilt, shame, pain, or whatever the case may be. Or, like I said, because with the Emperor, there's a lot of masculine energy out here. Um... I know myself even personally, even dealing with, you know, issues with a, a mother or father wound. It could have been an absent or an abusive mother or father in your life. But this has either made you too masculine or, you know, it has made you like go towards people who have some type of toxic or distorted masculinity. Somebody didn't want you to have some type of breakthrough here. OK, and again, this has a lot to do with this masculine energy someone who's very stuck in their ways this could yeah look at that there you go there you have it right there there could definitely be um a taurus capricorn virgo person here i'm getting more of taurus and or capricorn someone could have both of those in their chart some of you could be dealing with more than one masculine energy keep in mind masculine doesn't have to be male it could be a male or female but of course in this deck as i said before and here is the Queen of Cups. This is the original Queen of Cups, okay? And then we have this Queen of Cups. Someone here is very much used to you being, um, I'm hearing a little bit delusional. Someone is used to you being very much wrapped up in your feelings, in your heart space, but not actually acting, not actually being free to fully express your feelings. The reason why this Queen of Cups is dancing like this is because this person has actually embrace their emotions their raw emotions and has leaned into it this is understanding that yeah things are not great but yeah I, there's still a reason to to dance and to sing right so you have here this king of pentacles this king of pentacles is, is pretty much like in the upright and then you have this king of pentacles who is holding their pentacle back there's a person here who again i feel is a bit distorted someone here who has maybe money power um Maybe this person is even very like loyal, committed, but they're loyal and committed to what they feel serves them. OK, this person now, if they had people that were following them, Taurus energy, following them, respecting them or whatever, that's not the case because someone has most likely found out that a person that they really had a lot of respect for was not actually getting their information from from the a, a trusted source I'm hearing or someone was holding back the truth about something and it's coming out like this is just karma okay and there's just a lot of death and rebirth energy here already and you can see that there's definitely something here being modeled there there's for sure a water sign and an earth sign out here so you can be cancer pisces scorpio have this highly aspected in your chart and you can be dealing with a taurus um which is pretty strong here or um any other sign, but of course it could be any sign. But there's a lot of Cancer Pisces, a lot of Scorpio and Taurus energy here. And Scorpio and Taurus are opposites. So for some of you, this could even be like a soulmate, twin flame, like a um, situation here where there's just been like this massive um, awakening here. Some of you could have found out the truth, like I said, about some type of toxicity within yourself or your family or something and it has allowed you to have this breakthrough and a person does not want you to experience this type of breakthrough because it's the one thing that allows them to constantly come in and make these offers to you but these are this is a page of cups so it's a very small offer okay it looks like someone has been stuck in a loop for a very long time of accepting these very small offers from someone because maybe at some point you saw this person as being um very wise very structured disciplined maybe even noble to some some point or degree but now the truth is coming out that a person that you had a lot of respect for that person is not quite who you thought they were so with this scorpionic like energy that we are walking into now in this eclipse like season this is a time for you to see the truth about people around you whether it's friends family lovers a boss whomever like you really need to see the truth and the reason why you're seeing the truth is because you yourself are going through some type of awakening so you're recognizing things around you that may be distorted because of your own distortion. And that's what we all have to recognize. Okay. So yeah, it's like there's justice here in this forward movement. But here's the Queen of Swords. This Queen of Swords is looking in the mirror and her sword is down. So what this tells me is that again, when it comes to having 
justice in a situation. The temperance card right here, this is needing to balance the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. You've kind of got one foot in and one foot out, and there's a need for you to practice self-control, moderation, and to really, really find out where do you stand in certain situations, okay? Because now it's like you see this lion here is tired. Someone here has been steaming ahead on their journey with all of this power and this force. And I feel like someone was completely missing the point that at, at some point karma would come to collect. But somebody here knew I feel that karma was coming, but they wanted you to be in this energy of just being the naive gullible queen of cups and have your guard down and believe a bunch of illusions. Someone didn't want you to see yourself for being the queen of cups who is now free. They didn't want you to see that because again, this person could continue to breadcrumb you and hold back the truth. Yeah, at the bottom of the deck here, you have this huge, this sun card here. So this is like you knowing that you're the golden child, but now really stepping into that. That's what I feel a lot of this new energy is all about, is you letting go of a lot of illusions. Yeah, the judgment card. This is a wake-up call. This is you seeing the truth about, like I said, the good, bad, evil, and ugly within your life, within yourself, around you. And, and, and just everything in between. Answering this call is going to really allow you, though, to step into, like, some type of leadership role. Look, exactly as I said, because look at what just came out. You have the sun, the temperance, and then here is the empress. This is not the original empress. This is an empress who's taking a break now because this empress has already pretty much tamed many things in her environment. And she's fully protected. This, as you can see, is a sun card, but we just had the sun cards to fall before. And as I said, it's like you've already grown and evolved. You also see the temperance. This is not the original temperance. This temperance does not have one foot in the water and one foot on land. This particular angel has their foot in, in both feet in the water because this person is taking a break. There's a, a period here of rest coming for a lot of people because you have a brand new beginning, meaning you have an opportunity to have... This wake up call where judgment is being caught, like judgment is upon all of us, but you get to really, really just be very comfortable in your life because it's like you're on the good side of karma. So again, for a lot of people, if you are dealing with this feeling like, oh, everything is so heavy, um, you don't know what's going to happen. What you're being asked to do right now is to just lean in and to surrender. Allow the towers to fall. Focus on your breakthrough. Focus on transmuting energy, seeing that some of the things that have been done to you or against you in the dark, what, like I said, known or unknown, seen or unseen, it was for your greatest and highest good because now it's like, yeah, you, it's being made so evident that you are truly an earth angel, that you found exactly what works for you and other people. You are in this divine feminine energy. Because this was your birthright. This is what you were meant to be and to do since you were, since before time, right? So I feel like right now, like this is very encouraging. Yeah. See, here is, here, look at that. I really like this deck. But here, it's like some of you, you've been on a journey where I feel like you have been very feminine, very open, loving, caring, kind, um, nurturing to a lot of beasts. And if you see here, this beast is attacking this person. And this looks just like the Queen of Cups, honestly. Okay? A lot of you are realizing that even as an empath, even as a healer, as a light worker, as a high priestess, or whatever you may want to refer to yourself as, is that you cannot change the nature of a person. And even after you give a person all of these selfless acts of kindness, they can still attack you. And yet, at that point, you still have to make the decision to be a good person, you still have to make the decision to be noble. You still have to make the decision to recognize and understand that ju to judge and condemn a person is not really your job, but that a person will automatically be judged and condemned and will have to pay karma because of what they've done for you. But you don't necessarily have to take action. I know that Halloween is coming up and a lot of people, you know, do like protection work or whatever. But I will say this because I've 
gotten this message several times in the last few days. Some of you really need to be careful even with the protection work. I know that things are so easily accessible now and people, you know, are quick to run to candle magic and other things. You are needing to trust that there is, you know, depending on your beliefs, that there is always going to be something far greater and higher than you. Okay, we all can embody a God or, or God is like energy. But I feel like for some people, it is time for you to humble yourself and understand that you can rest because you've already arrived. You're already in that high, high vibration. You don't need to go and stoop to the level of other people by trying to retaliate against them. A lot of this chaos, magic, the conflict, the, the magic, the manipulation, the mind control spells, all of this different stuff, it's being reversed because energetically it, it just cannot survive like in this type of frequency and so it's all about the vibrational match that you are at this time so just make sure you know yeah look at that this magician is tired this person is ready to give up because i feel like for some of you i'm literally hearing even conjuring people have been conjuring up things to come in and attack you in some type of way spiritually mentally for some even so far as physically and these people are upset because they're just like, I don't, they don't understand why things are not working against you. It is because, like I said, you've already found the remedy. You've already been crowned as divine feminine or divine masculine. This was your calling from the very beginning. So it's like you have this divine protection around you. There's this wisdom. There's this grace that this just, it won't work. And people, they don't understand. I feel like there's people at this point, they're putting their sword down because they're like, well, what else can you do? Because now they're coming towards you backwards. You have people right now who are drinking, they're smoking, like they're wasting away because they're trying to come towards you on a horse riding backwards. People are starting to recognize exactly who you are. And if you notice here, the, the devil is chained. Now, also, what you guys are going to notice at this time, yeah, that a lot of people, they have no choice but to surrender to these endings and to death. But in this particular card with this devil being here, at first glance, it's like, oh, the devil is chained up so the devil can't hurt you or whatever. So you may be getting a hold of um, whatever this low vibrational energy is. This could be codependency. It could be toxicity, your own voids, vices, um, distorted perceptions or desires. The devil can come in so many different forms. But some people have gotten caught up and will repeat these cycles that they've been in for a very long time these seven to ten year cycles because oftentimes after a person goes through an ending they themselves will become the devil and you notice this a lot in empath narcissist like paradigms oftentimes you will meet a person who has been wounded for a very long time as an empath they will go out into the world and say, I I deserve for someone to pour into me. And they will become very, very greedy. There's a lot of people who have gotten themselves caught up in a lot of really bad karmic situations right now. And they're paying huge, huge karmic debts back because they didn't start out dark. They were tempted by the devil. These two people here have chained the devil, but they're also bec they're becoming like the devil. You have to be very careful that you don't allow bitterness, resentment, or a lack of forgiveness or anything like that to put you in a situation where you yourself become very low vibrational. And this is what has happened to a lot of people where, like I said, their jealousy, their envy, and other things, when they should have been going through a death, a rebirth, a transformation in their life, they decided that at whatever point they felt weak and they could not defeat the devil, so they decided to pretty much become the devil okay and this goes back to like i said that hierophant that energy here of someone i feel being very greedy someone wanted the spotlight they wanted a crowd they wanted a platform they wanted to be a leader they wanted all of that but they didn't actually want to do the work they wanted the power just like the devil they wanted the power like the devil and so they literally decided to embody the devil a lot of people are dealing with that or you're dealing with other people around you who are dealing with that. Yeah, the hermit. So people now are being forced to go within. To see the truth about who and what is really causing all of these issues and obstacles. And a lot of people are facing the reality that it's not so much the people around you that's causing these issues. But it's you 
if it's not you, it's someone you're dealing with. And, and that's a really hard pill to swallow because someone is now, they're no longer stuck in, um, in any type of hangman energy of trying to figure out. Someone here knows for a sure fact that they've been working against a, an extremely divine being. Someone who is golden, someone who's supernatural, someone who is extremely protected. Someone is, is fully aware of that now because nothing that they're doing is working. And if this is you, you should know by now that if you're constantly running to issues and obstacles, sometimes you guys, it's not so much that you're being attacked. Sometimes your own subconscious mind, which is what creates the majority of your reality, the fact that you have not let go of these dark, dark, shadowy things in your life because you have not healed your inner child, though that type of regret, the heartache, the pain, the resentment, it can manifest into various principalities and entities around you. So that when you go out into the world, no matter how good something may appear to be, you automatically have this paranoia that it's going to attack you. And what you're being asked to do in this time is to release that belief that every single beast that you encounter is out to get you. Or that the world is just full of beasts and, and you're just this person here who has to be selfless. No one said that you had to be a martyr. Because this person, this feminine energy here with this beast, you always have to keep in mind that you cannot change the nature of a person. A beast is a beast. Not to say that you can't coexist with one, but you should always remember that you have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready in the event that this thing shall attack you. Which goes back to the temperance energy of understanding self-control and discipline, doing things in moderation. A lot of people now are moving into cycles where you have to have standards, healthy expectations, boundaries. Because at any moment, something can switch and it can change and it can turn very dark. All it, all it takes is, of course, one bad decision to put you in a, 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 a karmic cycle for 10 years. And a lot of people now, you're getting out of these long karmic cycles. But the only way you're going to get out of it and go into something brand new as the empress, a divine feminine or masculine, is if you understand the importance of you creating exactly what it is that you want. And this means that you have to heal. You have to actually kneel down as a person who may be a star. You may be in what you may consider your shining glory and essence, but have you truly healed? Yeah. Because your destiny is here and it's a, something brand new. So a lot of you have experienced a lot of loss or you will continue to experience loss because you're being asked now, as I said at the very beginning of the reading, the high priestess, this person is not on a, like a throne, how you normally see the high priestess. You can't look at everything as black and white. You're going to have to actually go in and do the work. You can't just read the books. You can't just watch tarot. You can't just watch the sermons or whatever. However you attain your information, you have to actually go and do the work because there's things that are behind the veil that actually has the key to your own life purpose. So you in this time, you can't show weakness. And you know, the queen of swords, as I said before, it was the queen of swords before was someone who had their sword down. And there could have been illusions or someone was trying to, you cannot show weakness in the time now of having justice be served. Even if you yourself are receiving karma, because we all are, let's face it, I think that um, the end of Saturn retrograde is, it could have been yesterday or it's today, but Saturn is going direct. We're in an eclipse season and Scorpio season, okay? Nobody can outrun karma. Whether it's karma for things that you've done, um, karma from, from anything ancestral, past life, hereditary, whatever. Karma is here to collect for everyone in order to balance things out. And again, if we go back to the high priestess. Your idea of what a high priestess is, your idea of what it means to be spiritual. It's like you're walking out of this. You There's a completion here. It's a full karmic completion. And it's almost like you're walking out of 
a, a like a your own realm a demand a dimension like there's a huge paradigm shift that's happening for the people who actually want to be in alignment so you have a chance now to be very optimistic like i said about going down a new path and journey or even pursuing like a relationship or something that you truly love and that you desire. A lot of people have thought for a long time that everything in their life was spinning out of control because of a relationship, because of a partner. That's partly true, but what you were being asked to do was to face your own reality, face the music about yourself, pay your own karmic debts so that you could actually be a vibrational match for whatever is in this new, this new world for you. And some people they just they didn't they didn't get the memo, or they got it and they they ran away from it. This King of Wands is someone here who I feel is like for some of you this could be a twin flame or a soulmate, someone that you had some type of you know contract with. A lot of the contracts that were formed, you guys, because we're shifting into a, a higher realm, a higher frequency, another dimension at this point that is far more spiritual than what we've been living in for so long. A lot of those contracts that you've been holding on to that maybe they were not necessarily karmic before, they're still null and void now, okay? It's like you have no choice but to walk in your purpose and go towards your destiny and you have to be with those who are like-minded. There's no more being indecisive or straddling the fence. Like You have to choose. And if you choose to, to stay where you are, you don't get to leave this this realm or this dimension that you've been caught in for so long if you really want to graduate and be accomplished and to leave like you have to be willing to leave everything behind because now if you notice this hermit here there is no light here this person is out in the cold needing shelter and is away from everyone and is completely isolated but without a light some people are really at the end of the road they've they've gotten as much knowledge they've done as much trickery as they could do and now they're pretty much just out they're cold they're bitter they're upset emotionally they cannot bounce back from things that they've done here because a lot of people have been extremely foolish and a lot of people have been foolish who were supposed to be in a connection with you or people have done foolish things to you because they knew that you were going to a connection it's time for a lot of people to really Go into unions and manifest. The seeds have already been planted. So, I would just say at this time, like, to really, really try to keep yourself grounded. Be very stable. But just understand that there's a lot of endings that are happening that are completely just inevitable. But you really have to see, in order to get out of these cycles, what I'm seeing in this reading is... You have to really be able to recognize, like I said, your part in these situations. So many people are digging for information and they're getting it. Even in tarot, you get a lot of answers to your questions, but what are you doing with the information that you are receiving? I know here on my channel, I don't want this to be a gossip tarot channel. It doesn't matter what people have done to you. If you start to really go with and you will see... The reasons why perhaps you didn't have boundaries with those people you will see the reasons why you you missed the red flags and this person that you nurtured was able to still attack you because once you stop saying that you are a, a divine feminine you are a high priestess or you're a, a, a hierophant or, or whatever title you will understand that your power is in your purpose not in your just your position and a lot of people don't understand that a lot of people think that they have power simply because of their position but what about your position your position doesn't matter when there is no bond that's listening to you because they know that you don't have any power You can sit here all day and think that everything is black and white and that you know everything because of your wisdom, your knowledge, your bloodline or whatever. But until you get up and you do the work, none of that matters. It's all null and void. We're going into a time now and it's like I always say people who are around you and it, it could be you. OK, whoever it's like the cheat codes and the buddy passes aren't working anymore. Not in this this shift that we're in now. You don't get to walk around and have grace and favor and mercy without doing the work simply because you took somebody else's, you're using somebody else's buddy pass. I know I've said before, if 
all of the different streaming service providers like Netflix, Hulu, or whomever, if they all said that, you know, it you could only stream services one person at a time, do you know how many people would, would be without TV <laughs> and wouldn't have access to entertainment? It's the same thing now spiritually. A lot of people have been tapping into other people energetically. They've been watching, monitoring, hacking, spying, prying, doing all of this um, manipulation to get what they wanted energetically from other people without doing the work. You're going to be required to do the work now. And this is even for those people who consider themselves light workers and healers. That's why I said this year, I've taken nearly six months of personal time to myself this year, I've been gone twice for three months because to sit there and say that you know the information and you know how things are going to turn out, that's one thing. But like I said, until you really peel back the layers and you get and see what is behind the veil, you're going to be at a loss and you are always, um, it, there's always the chance and the possibility that you will be attacked by something that you're not ready for. This person is obviously off guard from whatever this is. And this can come, you know, it's it's like when people say sometimes common sense isn't so common. One thing about me, I always check in with my own ego. I don't think that because of what I know or my gifts or anything that makes me above anyone. I'm, I'm a humble and faithful servant. So I understand that no matter how much knowledge I have, I still have to go out and continue to seek the truth. And sometimes that means I say all the time, it's like you kind of have to take a ride on the back of the devil to understand the devil's games. But it takes a, a, a special person to not fall into heartache, pain, greed and their ego to actually become the devil on their pursuit to ending the devil or the toxicity it goes back to changing your own mindset though I've, I've i've seen a lot in the collective so many people of course because there are a lot of unions that are happening people are being so caught up on the other person and then people are losing faith because maybe someone new hasn't entered their life or whatever the case is but for me, I know personally, have you went back and dealt with your first heartbreak, which could have been your own parents? Some people have an absent parent. Some people have a, a parent that was there but was not emotionally available. Do you recognize the reason why you have the perception about femininity or masculinity, power, success? Where does that actually derive from? If you don't really know that and you can't recognize that something in your subconscious mind is blocking you from things, your conscious mind can tell you that you're the best person, life is going to be great, and you could get up every single day and work towards that. But if you have a wounded inner child that's telling you that you don't deserve certain things, that you won't have certain, that's what's going to manifest in your life. And I say all the time, a lot of us, we don't experience progression in our life with all of the wisdom, the knowledge and the information. There's still no actual growth. That's for a reason. That's because of the blockages in the subconscious mind. The devil is living in your mind. And this is a time to clear all of that out. And that's the hardest part, because in this time where so many people are supposed to be inheriting these huge, huge blessings of abundance. Your mission and your purpose is far greater than just yourself. You have to, like I said, be aligned. Wow. <laughs> this is a shamanic healing deck and here is death and forgiveness. Like I just said, you have to go back to the, wow, an emotional release here with grounding you have to go back to the beginning and find out where does that pit of hurt come from? You're needing to get in your sacred space so that you can open yourself up to more joy because there's a lot of anger here and the anger is what's preventing you from having just this new dawn, like these new beginnings here. A lot of people, you're going to have to embrace your own inner journey and it has nothing to do with other people. Um, I'm going to say this because 
it definitely is a message here about love and this is something that i myself have been looking at because no matter who the reader is our wisdom our knowledge you can you know gifts talents abilities but our life experiences obviously is going to um play a, a key role in how we interpret the energies and the advice that we give for a lot of women specifically if you have not dealt with their very first heartbreak whether it was your father your mother your first lover or whomever and you're carrying ancestral or, or hereditary like pain that has to do with love and relationships if in your mind you automatically go out into the world and you think that a person who has done something wrong cannot be forgiven they can't be trusted or whatever you will walk amongst some of the best partners or, or people who have the potential to be in a partnership with you and energetically you will not connect with that with a good person because there are good people who are in the world who are seeking grace mercy and the forgiveness from a feminine energy especially if you don't give that off energetically because of your subconscious mind blockages it does not matter how good you look how much money you make or how much of a divine feminine you call yourself because you do your daily affirmations and you do yoga or you're vegan none of that matters if your subconscious mind has been programmed to think that you cannot trust people whether it's a man woman child or whomever you will constantly meet people who are not trustworthy and for that reason it becomes almost impossible for you to grow and progress in relationships this goes for males females feminine masculine it doesn't matter you have to get to the root of your programming as to why you think certain things are going to end before they get started before i left before i had a lot of readings about generational hexes and curses but sometimes you guys it's not so much a hex or a curse there is a curse in your own mind because of how you perceive certain situations. So every single time you fall in love or every single time you're about to get that new job or um, something, your mind automatically, your subconscious mind, which is what creates your reality, it automatically will sabotage it because you have associated favor with, you know, um, disappointment. You have associated love with trauma. So until you get those things, your your mind, body, spirit, and soul aligned, you will kind of be stuck in this loop. We have an energy that's coming in now that's trying to give us all an opportunity to get out of the loop. Does your subconscious mind actually align with what your conscious mind, what your words, and even your daily habits and activities and actions are saying and doing? And oftentimes they don't. This is the reason why you have so many really, really spiritual and 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 you know, highly intelligent, successful people who they're not actually creating families or they're not happy in their job or whatever the case may be. So I would just encourage everyone to try to have this emotional release. Don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to journal. Don't be afraid to go to therapy or whatever you need to do. But at the root of this, and I've been talking about this all year, is forgiveness. Can you forgive yourself? Can you give a person grace and mercy? A lot of us are over the age of 30. You're going to meet people that you've done things to and you need to ask for forgiveness you're going to meet people that have done things in their past but if you have the type of spirit where you're saying oh that person can't change there's no way that person could ever change you're canceling out so many people because we all are guilty of things i think that right now like the message that i'm getting the most like from from god right now is just do you have the do you have it in you to give other people the type of grace and mercy and the forgiveness that you will want a person to give you or that God gives us all. Because until you go in and you forgive yourself and other people, your perspective is that nobody can change. So even now that you've come out of karmic energy and you've changed, people, they don't see your changes because you refuse to see their changes. It's just food for thought. Just saying. <laughs> You have to figure out how you're going to move forward victoriously. And that's coming from an emotional release that's going to allow you to be more grounded. You know, it's not always magic. It's not always, you know, the karmic. 
sometimes it's the karmic energies that are within you. It is you manipulating your own mind to think that you don't deserve better than what you have. I'm not negating the fact or minimizing the fact that, yeah, there are people and situations around you that are making things complicated, but it's never about them. It's always about you. It's about us. What can we do to see the situation differently, to actually heal, to grow, to strive and thrive in life and be better? People, we put way too much emphasis on other people. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. Okay. Work through your fears. Look at that. New moon in Scorpio. This is the new moon in Scorpio. Okay. New moon in Aries. It's time to take action. It's time for you to take action when it comes to working through your fears. Because most people, the emotional release that you need to actually experience that's going to allow you to be grounded and stable. It's going to be very scary. And it requires that you take action to forgive yourself and to forgive other people. And oftentimes, you guys, it's like um, like death. You know, scorpionic energy, death is here. Sometimes you're like, well, where? it's like gnats and flies, you know, attracted to, to trash or something dead. And you're like, where are these gnats and flies coming from in your home and everything is clean? This is how I'm seeing it right now. It's because there's something dead, like in the back of your refrigerator or a closet or something that you needed to get rid of. I would just encourage everyone to really find out what that hole in your soul is. Because there's a void there or there's a vice and it's allowing things that are dead to attach to it. Once you get rid of that, it's like you can get rid. There's nothing to attach to you. Some of you, you still have friends and family members or or even just thoughts that are attaching to a very dark and dead part of you that you need to let go. Your south node. This is your karmic energies. This is your shadow self. You have to embrace your shadow side, but you can't allow it to hold you back. And a lot of people will go and they'll do the healing work and they focus on everything and everyone around them. But you've not had that emotional release for yourself yet. And that's the reason why you're not seeing the progress that you want. I feel like a lot of people are so desperate for just progress and positivity at this time. But it's you're finding it hard to really step into this sacred space because there's more grounding that's needed. There's something that emotionally that you're holding on to is killing you and it's killing everything around you. And it has a lot to do, honestly, with just mindset. Sexual arts, okay. Someone could, you know, be dealing, needing to heal something here that has a lot to do with their overall sexual energy. Like I said, masculinity, femininity. Some people, of course, have, have struggled with sexual trauma or issues around sexual um, identity or whatever the case may be. Being misunderstood, feeling judged. Like I said, none of us can judge and condemn others, but th these are things that happen. These are things that perhaps you need to release. Rejection. All of these things is what makes people feel rejected. But when you deal with trauma and rejection or the trauma that comes from constantly being rejected, not being seen, heard, understood, and even accepted, you, you begin to sell out. You begin to convince yourself that it's okay to stay in a toxic situation environment relationship or even a toxic mindset despite the fact you know that it, it's not it's not serving your greatest and highest good this has definitely held a lot of people back i feel from being very free and their overall sexuality being in their like god god is like energy being masculine being very feminine owning who you are being truly authentic being grounded and stable fiery and passionate the very first card in the reading was the knight of wands a lot of you you're holding yourselves back because of things that have happened in the past or because like i said of just how you think and it comes from this hole in the soul so once you go and you find the root of that hole in the soul you can stop giving in to temptation the devil won't be able to connect to you so easily. And if the devil cannot connect to you, the devil can't run up to you every single time you're about to go into a new cycle and cause it cycle for you to crash and burn before it even gets started. It's like once you let go of this karmic tie, you won't keep throwing the devil a rope every time it tries to come back 
across the bridge that you know you need to burn. It's all about your self-love. This, this season for a lot of people, it needs to be invite only. Okay? Because you're going into a brand new karmic cycle. And karmic doesn't mean bad. Karmic simply means that you're, you're going into a new cycle where there's more to learn. There's more wisdom to be gained at this point. You're going to learn things and all of them won't be pretty or fun. But don't keep repeating the same cycle. You guys, um, this is, you know, my readings are more focused, like I said, on your individual journey. I will do a separate reading for love. Um, let's see. This affects in a, any of your relationships, though. This, this, like I said, this season, this energy, it's about you and your personal transformation. You have here assess the situation. Full moon in Pisces. Forgive. Like I said, forgive. It's a lot that um yeah, and clear your mind. New moon in Leo shine. It's a lot of Leo Pisces energy out here. Scorpio and Taurus energy, I've noticed. Unleash your kindest self. I'm telling you. And then look, reveal what needs to be seen. Last quarter moon in Scorpio. Reveal what needs to be seen. That's perfect. Unleash your kindest self. Remember I was saying earlier too, don't fall into um, being vengeful. Scorpios, this is, you know, a stereotype, of course, about Scorpios. But Scorpios, oftentimes it's like that high priestess and can see things in black and white. You know, if you do a person wrong that <laughs> carries that high priestess like energy, they do believe in... Um, like retaliating you know a scorpio is is small but packs a real punch a, a scorpio a scorpion can kill you um with just a sting you're being asked right now to do the counterintuitive and to send love light and forgiveness to things that are very dark and not so much other people around you you should do that but forgive yourself because for some people there is a fire there's a rage inside of you that you need to allow to be seen by you so that you recognize the fact that you yourself need to forgive. You may need to just forgive yourself. Some of you, it's time for you to have really tough conversations and do things where you may talk to somebody who has done something awful to you. But when you see that that person can come in and maybe they are seeking forgiveness. It should be able to let you see that you can forgive them and also forgive yourself. That instantly is going to change your subconscious mind from thinking that you can't trust anybody. You can't forgive anyone. You know, Scorpios are known to be very mysterious um, and have really bad trust issues as well as Taurus. Um, a lot of Taurus and Scorpio energy, like I said, opposites here. When you start recognizing the power in forgiveness, it's going to shift your subconscious mind and allow you to manifest things in your life that are actually in alignment with your conscious mind, which is you want to be happy. You want victory and success. You want to love yourself. You want to be loved by people around you. You want to go out and shine and be the best version of yourself. So be very kind. Be kind, be gentle with yourself, forgive yourself, assess a lot of the situations and allow yourself to see the good, bad, evil and the ugly. Recognize it for what it is and keep moving, but don't let your past hold you back. Because if you can get through this difficult time, which a lot of people have been going through difficulty for a very long time, soon when Sagittarius comes in, you will actually have a lot of good luck and prosperity because that's all about um, balancing. Here we have... First quarter moon in Sagittarius, believe in your good luck and then focus on the pot. Wow. Focus on the positive new moon in Sagittarius. And then here, um, where first quarter moon in Leo, be humble, but full moon in Sagittarius. See the bigger picture. Like I said, a lot of things happening in your life right now, it's not just about you. Sometimes forgiving a person, letting that person or their situation go or mending certain situations that's what's going to heal your bloodline. That's, go that's what's going to ensure that 
this ancestral trauma, these hexes, jinxes, and curses, they don't continue. So really assess and evaluate the situations around you. See the role that you played in it. Take responsibility. Be accountable. Sometimes you just have... Being the bigger person in a situation that you don't want to be the bigger person in, it's worth it when it can literally change your life or the life of others that are following behind you. Because for a lot of people who are unwilling to do this, you can expect to have a tower moment and a fall from grace because it's not in alignment with who you are being called to be as a leader, as a light worker, as a healer, as a shaman, as a, you know, a lot of people are moving from being emperors and empresses to being high priests and hierophants, leaders, being the temperance angel, being an actual earth angel, someone who is chosen or being a hermit, someone who can go in and study like that monk or that shaman or whomever. It's not just about empress, emperor, you know, mom, dad, husband, wife relationships, no, it's how exactly can your life inspire the masses. But that means that you have to be able to go in and do what the masses are struggling to do. It's, it's people being called into leadership, honestly. These are the last... Um, actually... Some of you have been caught up to with being a perfectionist. You need to let that go. Trying to make sure that your journey is perfect or how people see you is perfect. I tell people a lot of times that you're most relatable when you're transparent and you're authentic because there's way more imperfect people in the world than perfect. The truth is, is that there is no perfect person. So why are you striving to be perfect? No one will ever relate to you. You have here reach for the stars. So this thing, you know, you've barely scratched the surface of whatever you are hoping to manifest in your life. You have a lot of unlimited potential that you haven't tapped into. And you're about to experience this, which is why this huge shift, this major cleansing and clearing has to happen. You have to make space for this. It's like God is literally going like saying, you know, that skeleton that's in the back of your closet. God needs that space to put something in there. You can leave that, that skeleton there and the devil is going to keep on coming or you can get that skeleton out of that closet, out of your house and allow that closet to be somewhere where there is light and blessings. That closet, may, that closet is the portal. It is the gateway to all of your blessings and abundance. Even though you're looking at it, you're saying it's a very small closet. That's your magical closet that you're not tapping into because you keep allowing that skeleton to stay in there. You got to get that skeleton out, whatever it is. And whoever is watching this reading, you know what that thing is. You're going to have to dig deep. Trust me, y'all. I Listen, <laughs> I recently had to tap into that, that thing that I've been not fully embracing for most of my life. And I'm telling you, it, it will change your life. Seriously. Your guiding light, okay? In your darkest hours when you find the light. And you need the light to be able to lead the way. This here says inspire action. Okay. So focus on, you know, what inspires you and also on becoming an inspiration to others. Onward and upward and soul searching. So let go of the past, you know, so that you can create the future that you want and actually enjoy the present while it's here. So just go within and uncover like your true self and your true feelings. A lot of you, the karmic justice that you have coming in your life definitely has a lot to do with your overall security and stability. For a lot of people, your financial um, freedom is very much connected to you being able to free your own soul. Okay, so if you are having money issues or dealing with someone with money issues, um, this could be due to the fact that you're not allowing yourself to forgive or be forgiven. Okay, listen is here. It says you have to be willing to listen if you want to really understand someone. Now is not the time to be offering advice, but to be a compassionate listener. To listen fully and intently means to pay attention, not, not to just what's being said, but to what lies beneath the words. Exactly. That totally resonates. That's the re I'm just saying, you know, personally, that's the reason for me. I've been quiet for a while because I needed to listen. 
for a lot of people who are dealing with family issues, sometimes you need to listen to those elders. You need to listen to people around you and forgiveness will come because you will begin to understand that sometimes people, they just don't see things the way that you see it. When you listen to people beneath their words and between the lines, you can see the hurt, the hurt, the pain, the despair, the suffering that that person has gone through, which has affected their subconscious mind. And that may be the reason why whenever they come around, there are arguments or disagreements that manifest between you and that person. But if you would take the time out to have a little bit of grace and mercy to just listen, it's like you will experience so much more favor in your life. You have be proud. It's time to celebrate all that you've achieved, all that you are and that you will become. Every once in a while, it's important to stop and acknowledge what you've achieved and to be proud. That's another thing. Don't be so caught up in healing that you forget to just live. Because sometimes healing can be so difficult, especially when you are not really facing yourself. That you will go down these rabbit holes and you'll get stuck in darkness. If you're having a problem with finding the answer, pray about it, but don't allow yourself to be stuck. That's why I say here, we're not going to just gossip on this channel because it's going to keep you stuck. How are you progressing? How are you moving forward? Because you don't want to be stuck in just existing. You have to start living. Celebrate what you've achieved. Celebrate how far you've come and then stay connected is here. We are all born connected to spirit, often known as the divine source. Yet many of us have a tendency to pull away from that connection as we journey through life in the physical world. Now is an important time to reconnect to the source. Yes. And have fun. Let go of all that is dead so that you can have fun. When was the last time you did something for the first time? When was the last time you had fun? When was the last time you changed your style or... Just embrace something or someone new. Scorpio energy as well, you know, and, and even Taurus being very stubborn and analytical, you know, being very, very rooted in and being grounded, logical and analytical for a lot of people. Sometimes you have to let go of your analytical mind and give yourself permission to just be and to have fun to see where the journey is going to take you. You have to release some of those control issues. I'm going to pull some release cards um, because it looks like that's what a lot of this reading has been about. And then I am going to go ahead and close out. You guys, I was so nervous doing this reading. <laughs> surrender the habit. Um, surrender the idea that you can fix someone and surrender the habit of people pleasing. So for some people who have been um, dealing with certain issues, perhaps around codependency, abandonment, rejection, or whatever that hole in your soul may be, as a result of that, maybe you've been living your life for a long time where you've been people pleasing. You've been trying to help other people instead of focusing on yourself or being true to yourself. Um, you haven't been focused on your own happiness because you've been trying to fix other people. Because oftentimes, like I said, we will ignore the, the skeleton in the closet and continue to try to host a party and make everyone happy but the skeleton in the closet is still getting everyone's attention because it stinks it's dead right so you cannot try to fix other people around you and heal them to avoid healing yourself and you have to get go a few layers deeper and understand that you're doing that because of a fear of intimacy, a fear of being rejected or abandoned again, a fear of feeling whatever hurt you felt before that could have possibly made you feel nearly dead inside. If you listen to what you say to other people, or if you play back and listen to what you've allowed people to say to you, you will see that you've been overcompensating and trying to please other people instead of you loving yourself and instead of you actually being willing to surrender to your complete healing. You have to be willing to be loving and compassionate, like I said, and show grace and mercy to yourself before someone else. That's for your own physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. Surrender to creativity. It's time for you to look into the mirror and see, like, who do you really want to be? 
tap into your imagination, but it's very hard to imagine who you'd like to be in life when you're so focused on, honestly, who you haven't become or the things that people have told you you haven't become. Yeah, it's time to just surrender to joy, joy and fun. Surrender your addictions and the addiction for a lot of people is just it's a toxic mindset. You could be addicted to substances, food, people, sex, overthinking, overworking. You're going to have to heal that. And you can heal that by being more creative. Taking time out to find joy. Try to find joy in your healing journey. It doesn't have to be just all bad or hurtful or, or painful. Once you confront the, the source of the pain from there, yeah, it may hurt, but that's where the healing starts. A lot of people are going in circles trying to heal everything around them instead of healing themselves. And this is the reason why there's no inner peace. And you're needing to surrender your negative thinking so that you can surrender to your intuition. Your intuition will always be blocked or it'll be off and you will then begin to even resent your, high, your own higher self because of your own negative thinking. So strive for a lot of joy and inner peace. By really confronting, like I said, those things from your past. For some of you, even a past life that you are the most fearful about confronting. A lot of people, what I'm picking up is there's a lot here around abandonment and rejection. Trauma, especially like sexual trauma. You don't want to confront these things because you don't want to relive the pain. But if you think about it, if you confront it now, you relive that pain and your perception about it changes. Being able to forgive someone and yourself is going to empower you. And you get to live and have freedom for the rest of your life. 